subject to the jurisdiction, followed by the Star of Nevada, by Ms. Anisha Hurt.
that we're not going to separate to run this campaign together. Ran against some historic incumbents who was in 20 years, somehow, some way, with his work ethic. Somehow he sucked me into it, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes, 5 o'clock in the morning, seeing the horn going, we went away to Starbucks. It was time for us to run a campaign. After that, he decided to run for mayor, in which fully supported him, fully believed him, knew that he had the best interests at heart, the city residents at heart. I have not seen anybody work as hard for the improvement of the city of Red Harbor than this young man. Being the young man who looked older than me. <laughs> I've seen him carry with character, understanding, bring another level to the commission, being professional, and one how to articulate that which needs to be done. He came from under the strong hand of the government, the state of Michigan. You know, it's pretty happy when the EFM was here. We stood strong. The EFM stripped us of our power. Last thing I'm gonna say this. Somehow we kept ended up in the place we weren't supposed to be. It was a phone conversation that when we got elected, that they wanted to destroy us politically. They said whatever city that has an EFM that comes in when they're elected, we want to make sure that those people in office cannot run again for 10 years. They were not looking at us at the present, but they were looking at us to destroy us in the future. We had nothing to do with what happened before we were elected. But we had to assume the wounds of the city of Ben Harbor, and we had to carry it out with vision and plan. The mayor will often say, just hold on. The state's gonna leave after a while. I've seen the state leave, seen millions and millions of dollars for the development fund. The state is gone, the buildings are arrived. The state's gone, and people are coming in, bridges are being built to the city of Ben Harbor. Right. I believe that this is a great, one of the greatest mayors that we've had, and it's gonna be one of the greatest mayors that we'll have in our future. I want you to do me a favor, everybody if you would, stand on your feet, clap your hands.
night, that was the first one. Also, with them, the court of Mr. Vincent Harbour. Mr. Vincent Harbour, please stand. We have also with us the district champion. and other events and has become an attraction 
not just for people around the United States, but people are coming from all over the world to come and visit, spend money in visit Harvard because of Gene Block Park. Benton Harbor in 1866, petitioned for incorporation as a village. Later on, the city of Benton Harbor in 1891 elected its first mayor, Mr. Fred A. Hobbs. In 1903, Benjamin and Mary Purnell established the Israelite House of David on a long tract of land at the eastern edge of the city. And as Benton Harbor grew in 1925, they began to pave roads. Then the industry came. In 1930, 54 industries were employing 4,000 men and 500 women. We've been working on that ratio. <laughs> to manufacture more than 100 different items reflecting the prosperity of these years, the city enjoyed a building boom. Sheffield Building, which had just been recently renovated. Kim Ankley, parents and gravel supply, enjoy that legacy, plan to have apartments as well as hopefully a restaurant on the down uh, part of the building. And that's one of the developments that we can see and also preserving a building, a historical site in the city of Benton Harbor. At that time, the Liberty Theater, the Benton Hotel, the Fidelity Building, the YMCA, Hotel Michigan, and the Municipal Building was built in 1937. And at that time, five new churches were built. But today we have nearly 114, some have told me, on the books. The way we work. But the city of Benton Harbor began to grow, continued to change, and we saw a decline. We saw when business began to pack up and leave. In 1982, the Michigan Department of Commerce ranked Benton Harbor as the state's most distressed. They began to see a surge in development. But where in 1986, I believe it was, was the establishment of the BDA. We have our president with us today, Mr. Richard Hensel. Would you please stand? <laughs> During the holiday season, the Christmas lights, that lit up downtown Benton Harbor. Our DDA worked with local businesses and other stakeholders so we could once again light up our downtown, serve as a sign of development and life that we want to see come to the city of Benton Harbor. In transitioning, the city of Benton Harbor has emerged from a state-declared emergency which lasted from 2009 to 2016. During the emergency, the city reduced staffing from levels of to 100. But now we are at nearly 50 full-time These numbers include the staff, police department, fire department, water department, public works department, as well as administrative positions to support the various departments. In 2018, 
18, and these are numbers from then, the city employs approximately 50, 44 times, 12 part time. While the city has started its recovery, it is still faced with a number of concerns that need addressing. Our severely underfunded pension, police and fire at 49%, the general non-union at 38%, the general union 24 percent requiring 1.2 million in annual contributions for 2019. <coughs> we have an aging infrastructure streets water mains sewer mains and stormwater collection system in need of approximately 100 million over the next 20 years rising costs specifically general liability insurance working compensation insurance health care costs, and utility costs. In spite of the dismal circumstances that we have faced, the administration of the city has made tremendous strides. These measures have ensured the solvency of the city as well as striving toward maximum efficiencies and exemplifying do more with less. Some of the contributions or the accolades Usually, the Event Harbor updated its website where it's more citizen and user friendly. Working with the city clerk to review the city code of ordinances to ultimately recodify the entire set of ordinances and have them published. So you can go online and find any ordinance so you can be in compliance with the rules and regulations as it relates to the city. We've contracted with Ring Central to provide phone service for the city at cost savings. This year we received great news that this was the third consecutive year that the city auditors have presented a clean audit for the city of Ring In fact, it was clean unmodified, where that's the top categorization that a city can have as it relates to its audit. This is the fifth consecutive year that the city of Ben Harbor has finished the year with a positive fund balance. The fifth consecutive year that revenues have exceeded expenses for the city of Ben Harbor. This is the fifth consecutive year that the city of Ben Harbor has a balanced budget. <laughs> overall increase of the cumulative fund balance of the city by $802,250 from $3,677,334 to $4,479,584. So one of the things that we wanted to do as the mayor and the city council was work closely with the city manager finance staff to pull the city out of the muck and mire of uh, pay this payday, checks bouncing, uh, co-mingling of funds, better known as Robin Peter, to pay home. But the city of Benton Harbor, not only do we have to project unity and strength, but we have to project efficiency. We have to project excellence. We have to exude professionalism because the economic competitiveness that we can see not only on the state level but on the municipal level, that the city of Benton Harbor must make itself the most marketable because people can go and spend their money anywhere they want. starts with the local government. And if we present ourselves as all of the above, then that makes people want to come and sit down and say, I want to invest in the city of Benton Harbor. I want to recognize some of those persons on this evening. I do believe that small business 
is the hallmark of any municipality. In fact, it's a small business that helped to build this country. Some have said that unemployment is high because entrepreneurship is low. But we have had entrepreneurs to step out. In the city of Benton Harbor, do we have any entrepreneurs here tonight? If you are small business owners, could you please stand?
who said, I need the signature of the mayor according to the city charter. And I had the city manager researching, and he said, Mayor, this is correct. <coughs> and we signed, and now he's up and he's open. But it's right on what street? Water street, Water street, Water street. 120 Water Street. <laughs> Cornerstone Alliance. Could you please stand, Mr. Cleveland? <laughs> Under his leadership, they have assisted six companies to expand and relocate in this area, creating more than 200 new jobs and investing more than $26 million helped to launch 16 new small businesses. Butterfly Effect, Mr. Kia Dudley, who was a certified trainer, is working with patrons as we speak. But that's one of the businesses on Wall Street. A building was dilapidated and not being used. She decided to go in and help the health and fitness of those in this area and that's one of the small businesses that they have worked with. <laughs> they have successfully engineered the $1.2 million pedestrian bridge connecting Vic Harbor and St. Joe. And last night, did a presentation to the city council where a district, an Oprah district was established which presented hard questions. Even some probably would categorize it as interrogation. <laughs> but the city commission asked the tough questions, and as a result, what is called an obsolete property rehabilitation district was established, which frees us to tax. Not that they won't pay taxes, but it's frees for 12 years as they develop, as money comes in. And the building that's being developed is a historical building known as the Harbor Center. And as I said last night, when I toured the facility, I probably should have went to Spectrum Medical Facility. Afterward, because the toxins and the uh, mold and et cetera, et cetera. Bad animals. Certain places they told me, don't walk over there, you can fall through. But nearly $3 million will be pumped into that building. You can see some of the photos here. That will become ultra-modern apartments reflecting the 21st century, and also two commercial spaces beneath it. Benton Harbor as a city, we're building for. And the city council understands that we have to make a city competitive. At one point, I said that I'm not giving not one more tax break, not one more tax incentive, not one more tax abatement. But again, in an environment that's highly competitive, the state of Illinois as we speak, are making laws and making moves to capture the new, like it or not, medical marijuana industry that's here in the state of Michigan. The city of Benton Harbor opted in, and just on application alone, the city acquired over $100,000 for those who want to uh, invest in the city of Benton Harbor in that industry. The Al Rico property, which was another uh, 
landmark or a piece of land, parcel, that had gone in foreclosure and for all intents and purposes was left for them. The developer came in and worked with the uh, Barron County Land Bank and intends to invest, I believe it is up to 11 million in that facility and to create over 200 jobs in a long projection, but developing a site that at this time the city is currently collecting no tax. City of Benton Harbor, as a city, we must increase our commercial tax base. Many are asking how we're going to, uh, or we got to fix the potholes, and we do. Governor Whitmer, as you can see, is proposing a 45 cents uh, gas tax. And I don't know if I, 45 cents. That could be considered a little high. I didn't get an amen. <laughs> but what I do know is that it's going to take money. And sometimes we have to look at, not at the fact that I'm paying, which you are, but that payment is an investment. So the city of Benton Harbor, we ask our residents to pay into a city income tax. And it was a tough fought campaign. Persons on both sides, groups on both sides. And at the end, the yes vote prevailed. And I'd like to report to you today that we have collected $1,349,000 excuse me, $349,119 and six cents as of last week. <laughs> the tax season will be over for 2018, April 30th, so you still have time to pay a tax. <laughs> and at that time, we will give a overall report of what has been collected, what has been refunded. But the good thing, the city of Benton Harbor, we ask you to vote yes, but we ask you to vote yes to fix our streets. So as of today, that money still will be used only for streets, sidewalks, alleys, and emergencies. We recently had an emergency where a bus fell into a sea. And ABC 57, thanks to you all, it went all around the world. <laughs> but that was one of the reasons why we allocated emergencies. Some said, well, what is emergency? Why the council, you know, they're going to say anything. But when we look at the infrastructure problem, that the city of Benton Harbor has. We just recently closed Park Park. We learned that uh, it's not what's on top of the ground that's the big problem. It's the infrastructure underneath. So in order to fix the street, it has to be fixed underneath first and then on the top. This, same with the Empire Bridge. We did receive a grant, I believe it's $395,000, thanks Mr. Manager, to fix the Empire Bridge. <laughs> However, we don't get the grant for 2021. <laughs> But I got good news. good news. Since the city of Benton Harbor's finances is strong, thanks to our city manager and staff. Uh, you can that. Uh, we can leverage the income tax dollars. 
We work with our city income tax board. We work with our city engineer, Adam Marks. Are there members of our income tax board here? Could you please stand?
as it relates to housing. So we have to have, thank you, As a professional, if I come home and I want to have a certain living standard, be in a certain environment, we have to create. We have to make our neighborhood safe. This is why it's a tough job. But I want to commend our public safety director So no 
or some, you know, I ain't snitching. I'm not telling, but I asked our police chief to help me. Let's create an environment where if we're going to stop the violence, pass the lynch coin and we got to stop the silence. <laughs> somebody breaking break in grandma's house, mm -hmm. then I'm getting on the phone and I'm calling the public safety department. If I see somebody jumping on their wife, <clears throat> Lord help. <laughs> but this is real. Then we have to contact those in authority to help address those problems. So as we close, the city of Benton Harbor is building for We cannot look The city of Benton Harbor is not what it was. We're not what we will be. But God is not through with Benton Harbor. thoughts, we have to manage our expectations. Mm -hmm. When I first became the basketball coach for Benton Harbor, the cover was vacant. But the people were still expecting Bishop Atterbury, that 1964-65 state championship team. Mm -hmm. That 1992-93 team. That I played on. <laughs> but our minds were still stuck in what we were, as opposed to being able to assess and analyze where we are. And after we take a sobering appraisal of what Benton Harbor is right now, in real time, when we are able to do that, then we can project influence and shape tomorrow. We're not 19,000 strong. But God City of Benton Harbor, some has classified us as last. But I respectfully submit to you, we're moving and we will be. The city of Benton Harbor will be the crown jewel of Solomon. Residents this time 
an Appian group last year, Apollonia Williams, let me be correct. But let's do it all together. And let's come out in not handfuls, but in droves, and let's clean up mm -hmm. our systems. <laughs> So I leave you by saying God bless you and God bless Benjamin.